Hello guys, this is Khalid Ahmed from Millennium Immigration Canada. Today I am celebrating these holidays. Okay, today and tomorrow is a day off. I am here with my family in Canada. So we are here on Long Point. Yeah, this is the beach here. Nice beach, nice people. And good looking beach here. So I'm today I'm gonna make a video on a French speaking skill worker streams under OINP. So this stream requires uh, seven mandatory minimum requirements. So what are those minimum requirements? So let's go and see. Thanks. Hello guys, how are you today? Okay, today we will talk about Ontario's Express Entries French speaking skill worker program. Ontario Express Entry French speaking a skilled worker stream is an uh, immigration stream under the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program. It gives French speaking skilled workers with strong English language abilities the opportunity to apply to permanently live and work in Ontario. You must have a valid profile in Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada's and IR IRCC's express entry systems and receive a notification of interest from Ontario before you can apply online to be nominated by the Ontario government for permanent residence. Once you are nominated, then you are to apply to become a permanent residence through this link. You know, before you apply, you must have a profile in IRCC's Express Entry System to get a notice of uh, notification of interest so that you can apply to Ontario's Express Entry French Speaking Skill Worker Program. Before you apply, for this stream you have to answer a couple of questions by clicking this one if you click here then it will ask a couple of questions and on the basis of uh, those response the express entry system will indicate whether you qualify for the federal express entry program if you qualify you will be provided with a reference number which you can use to create an online profile in the express entry system once you have created your profile, you will receive an express entry profile number and a job seeker validation code. You will need these numbers if you receive a notice of uh, notification of interest from Ontario and wish to apply to Ontario's express entry French speaking skill worker program. So before going to do anything, you must go on this link and then give a couple of answers of a couple of questions. And then on the basis of that, you know, you then you will get a reference number and then you will uh, that will be used to you create a profile number you know and a job then you will get a job seeker validation code you know you will also be assigned a comprehensive ranking system crc score your crc score is calculated based on the information provided in your profile including your age education language proficiency skills work experience etc before you apply continue when you create a profile in the express entry system you must indicate your interest in immigration to ontario by selecting ontario or all provinces and territories if you want to come to ontario then you have to select ontario if not then you have to select all provinces and territories you must provide accurate and truthful information in your express entry profile if you if you provide wrong information false information then you will be banned or you will bar, you know, they will bar you for five years and you will be inadmissible to Canada. Understand the application process. You have 45 calendar days to apply to this stream. From the date you receive a notification of interest issued by Ontario for Ontario's Express Entry French speaking skill worker stream. You have to apply online through the OINPE filing portal. Okay, the link is here. If you click, then it will show the full process it takes about three hours to complete the application you no need to sit three hours in one shot okay do a part of the work and then save it and return back you can complete application yourself or you can hire a representative to complete it on your behalf and you this is the fees to apply for this system is 1500 Canadian dollars and you have to pay these fees only by credit cards you know and OINP only accept Visa, Visa Debit, MasterCard and MasterCard Debit. Have your supporting documents ready? You also need to make sure you have all your supporting documents in French or English. 
they must be scanned and ready to upload when you apply. If you do not, your application will be returned as incomplete and your application fee will be refunded. So to qualify for Ontario Express Entry French skills, French speaking skill workers team, you must also meet uh, the requirements of one of these federal immigration program. You know, if you want to apply for this French speaking skill worker stream, then you can apply either uh, this program, federal skill worker program, or another program like Canadian experience class. Either one, not both. Okay. If you want to understand, you know, about the program details, then please click this link here. It will uh, give you full know-how about this details. What you need to do, you know, before you do anything, you know, first the questionnaire which I just I showed you back, you just have to check your eligibility. You have to take, but you must have the result of your language test. And the second thing is your ECA report, which is your foreign educational documents assessments report, you know, which is called ECA. And third, you must have to determine your no code for your past work experience. Because when you are applying for any uh, for a program, a stream, then you must know which no code your job carries. So I have made all videos, you know, on this uh, on the language test also, and or for EC also, and for the National Occupation Classification Code also. You know, if you just go to uh, YouTube and click uh, Millennium Immigration Canada, that is my uh, YouTube channel, and you will find detailed video so for the education credential assessment you know if you click here there are designated organizations you know you know they are doing your foreign educational credential assessment so these are the these are the designated organizations competitive education services you know the part of university of toronto schools of continuing studies international credential assessment service of canada world education services international qualification assessment services international credential evaluation services these are the five you know designated organizations through which you will do your credential assessed so for the doctors you know for their degrees you know the professional body for doctors and the doctors will do their uh, degrees assessment through this medical council of canada and those who uh, are pharmacists the no code for pharmacy 3131 for the doctors 3 level 1 or no 3 1 level 2 you know then you have to do your uh, documents assessment through pharmacy examination examining board of canada as so i mentioned you know, either you can apply for the federal skill you can uh, you have to meet either uh, minimum requirements either for this federal skill worker programs or canadian experience class if you click here it will give you the full detail of the program when you submit your application to the ONP, you will need to select which federal program you would like to be assessed against. So I just mentioned you, you know, either you have to select Federal Skill Worker Program, or you can go to the link uh, by clicking this uh, link also, or you have to uh, choose a Canadian Experience Class. Now once you get no uh, notification of interest, from that date you have 45 calendar days after you receive your notification of interest through your IRCC online account to submit an application to the ONP. Mandatory requirements to qualify under Ontario Express and Defense Speaking uh, Skill Worker Pro Stream, you must meet all the criteria in the seven categories below. You do not need a job offer to apply, guys. You are lucky. You don't need a job offer from Canadian employers for the for these streams. First one is the mandatory requirement: is your work experience must decide which of the following two federal programs you would like to be assessed against. Either you have to select Federal Skill Worker Program or Canadian Experience Class. So for if you select Federal Skill Worker Program, you must have at least one year of continuous paid full-time work experience or the equivalent in part-time work in skill type 0, skill level A or B of the National Occupation Classification. I just showed you that. So the full-time means, you know, uh, you have to work 30 hours uh, per week, so it will become uh, 1,560 hours, you know, in the year. If less than one year, if you meet 1,560 hours, then it means then you are not qualified, because the requirement is in one year you have to meet 1,560 hours. 
you know, if you work uh, full time, uh, full time uh, means 30 hours uh, per week. And the part time, part time means uh, uh, 15 hours per week. So in this way, you have to uh, you have to accumulate uh, these 1,560 hours in two years. Your must your work experience must have been obtained within the last five years from the date of submitting your application to the OMP. So suppose if you are applying in 2020, then you must, you know, uh, must uh, got this experience in like at least one year experience in the last five years from the date of submitting your application. Means in 2015, you know, from it is starts from 2015. So between 2015 to 2020, you have, must have got uh, at least one year's ex continuous full, uh, paid full-time work experience. Your work experience may be from uh, Canada or overseas, you know. It doesn't matter, you know, if you got Canadian experience or overseas, you can, call it, you can apply for that. So continuous means uh, no break in employment over a one year period. So in one year, there, there must not be a break. Federal skilled worker program continued. You know, work experience may consist of back-to-back -back jobs with the same or different employers with no gap in between, but at least one year must be in the same NOC uh, preparation as your primary NOC declared in your experience entry profile. If you are using peers of uh, self-employment, you will need to provide uh, um, employment documentation that is independently verifiable through third parties. This can include client's reference letters indicating your duties and periods of work as well as evidence of ongoing payments to you personally. For the services provided, for example, invoices, please also note that uh, your hours of self-employed work must be uh, quantifiable to ensure that you accumulate uh, at least 1560 hours over one year of employment. I just mentioned that. A reference letter from yourself will not be acceptable. So the second uh, stream is a Canadian experience class. You must have at least one year of cumulative uh, paid full-time work experience or the equivalent in part uh, paid part-time work in Canada in a skill type zero or a skill level A or B of the NOC. So, so I just mentioned the what is a full-time paid work it means 30 hours per week paid work and it will accumulate in one year 1560 hours or part-time you can show part-time uh, experience also but you have to show at least uh, 15 hours per week and that uh, will become 1560 hours uh, in two years work experience must have been obtained within the last three years from the date of submitting your application to the OMP so suppose if you are submitting your application uh, in 2020, then you have uh, started working you know, in 2017. So it will become three years from 2017 to 2020. So within the last three years. So that will at least one year, you know, you must have to show between 2017 to 2020. You can show, you know, either in one or more of the occupations that you identified in your express entry profile. An experience must not be outside of Canada, it must be uh, within Canada. But if your work experience was obtained in Ontario in an occupation that requires a license or other authorizations, only work experience, you know, uh, acquired after becoming a qualified to practice that occupations in Ontario will qualify. Suppose in Ontario, if you uh, got your uh, car mechanic license or refrigerator mechanic or air condition mechanic license, you know, so your experience uh, before getting that license will not be counted. So if you, once you got your license from, from the government or from the uh, body, licensing body, from that date, you know, your one year experience will be counted to apply for this Canadian experience class. The second mandatory requirement is your education. You must have a Canadian bachelor's, master's or PhD degree or its equivalent in another country. Suppose if you are uh, applying, uh, you are, have a um, uh, like uh, non-Canadian degrees, you know, 
that degree must be at least uh, equivalent to the Canadian bachelor's degree or master's degree or PhD degree, then you can apply. So the minimum is uh, a bachelor's degree to qualify. If you completed your outside uh, uh, you know, studies outside of Canada, you need to get an educational credit assessment. You know, if you click here, so I have just shown you before, uh, earlier, then there are those five, seven uh, designated bodies, you know, they will do your assessment. So the note, the government mentioned here that completing a three year program at a university, college or other institute is not the same as having a bachelor's degree. Your educational credential assessment must state that you have the equivalent of at least a Canadian's bachelor's degrees to qualify. So assess your uh, foreign degrees. The assessment must be done by one of the, of the following organizations designated by IRCC. So I have uh, given you the link of each uh, designated body. You just click here. I just mentioned uh, also, you know, so you can do your assessment in one of them. But just keep in mind, you know, this uh, body, International Qualification Assessment Services, that is uh, that has a temporary backlog until May 19, uh, 2020. But that uh, backlog is already over, so I think they have also started uh, doing assessment. And uh, if you do your assessment through World Education Services, I think that is uh, more quicker. To authorize ONP to see your ECA results, because once you get your results, so INP cannot see your results until you fill up this authorization form. So compare for comparative education services, you have to fill up this consent form. It is in PDF format. If you don't have PDF in a computer, download and uh, download this form and fill up. Uh, Medical Council of Canada, the doctors, physicians, you know, they have to fill up, uh, order a copy of your report and declare the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program as a recipient of the report. And World Education Services, you can also fill up uh, this uh, form here. But you must have to indicate OIN, OIN. For the other organizations, no additional steps are required. The third mandatory part is language. You must be able to understand, read, write, and speak French at a Canadian language benchmark CLB level 7 or higher. Your French skills must be a CLB Canadian language benchmark 7 or higher and in english you must get clb level six or higher you know you have or you are required both languages expert expertise take an approved french or english language test before you submit your application to this stream so i already uh, mentioned you that but still i repeat it again in english you have two tests ielts journal training and the second is self uh, journal test you can take either one you know, if you take uh, IELTS general training, or CELPIP general training, you know, you have to, in English, you have to get a CLB level six or higher. So CLB six is minimum. If you get more higher, more more good for you. So for the for French test, this is uh, TCF Canada. It is called Test de uh, Connaissance du Francais pour le Canada. The second one is TEF Canada. So you can take either one. But you have to keep in mind that you have to score at least seven or higher. I have made also a video for the language testing details. Click the link below here, and then it will take you to the video where you will have more understanding about a language test and it, its details. Number four mandatory requirement is your settlement funds. Okay, if you click this link here, here. So if you are bringing, uh, if you are coming along here, you need to support yourself, you know, twelve thousand nine hundred and sixty Canadian dollars. If you are coming two people, then you need sixteen thousand hundred hundred and thirty five Canadian dollars. If you are three people, then uh, you need nineteen thousand eight hundred thirty six dollars. So in this way, like uh, as much as as people are increasing, you need uh, more money. So for each additional family members after seven, 
then you need 3492 Canadian dollars so in this so, so here you can calculate your funds you know which you required to qualify for this stream the fifth mandatory requirement is intention to live in Ontario Ontario is a province of Canada so you must intend to live in Ontario after you are granted permanent residence OIMP uh, determines this by examining your ties to Ontario which can include things like like uh, working or have worked in Ontario getting job offer or applying or interviewing for jobs or if you have taken admission in college and universities you are studying you have to show that uh, by documents or you are doing some volunteer work or you are leasing or owning property means you bought a house or car on your name so it will show your ties to the province so visiting different places having professional networks and affiliations family ties and personal relationships so through these uh, ties the OINP will determine you know, you know how much you are uh, intended uh, to to live and work in Ontario number six mandatory is your legal status in Canada if you are applying from within Canada you must have legal status and legal status means you must have a visitors record or a study permit or work permit you know if you don't have any of these then it means that you are illegal so illegal cannot apply for this stream at the time you apply so you must have you know either one document at the time when you apply for this stream and you must have to uh, maintain that status until the time of nominations now those people you know who want to renew or extend uh, their temporary status uh, you know and documents which are uh, which are visitors record work permit study permit before its expiry date you know they are also eligible and they are called implied status number seven and last a mandatory requirement for this stream is federal skill worker program you must have to meet at least 67 points you know uh, on the six selection factors which are educational languages skills work experience age range employment in canada and adaptability you must have to uh, score 67 points out of 100 so 100 is full marks so you have to score 67 points uh, on these areas in education, language skills, various areas, age, arranged employments in Canada, and adaptability. So, uh, all these uh, success selection factors carry some marks. I have also made a video if you want to understand more about these six, se six selection factors, you have to click this link. I have made a separate video on this topic, which is called six selection factors. So, supporting documents, you know. So all supporting documents must be scanned and uploaded in your online applications. Refer to the document checklist for Ontario Express Entry French Speaking Skill Workers Team. If you click here, so you know your notification of interest from Ontario, this document you must have. And uh, I didn't read identity documents, what are ident identity documents? I don't want to go in detail, but just, just show you like identity documents like your photograph, your passport, stated doc status documents in Canada. So everything you will find here in detail. So the link is already here. Your educational documents, your language test result, your documents to show employment in Ontario, and your work history documents, documents to demonstrate that you meet the settlements, funds requirements, you know, your resume, other optional documents, family documents. We must have to uh, go one by one and then you will get detail of the documents. Uh, remember, if you do not uh, upload all the required documents, your application will be returned. If a supporting document is not in French or English, you must provide a copy of the original documents and a notarized translation of the documents. Please read documents translation and notarization for more information. You have to click. It will tell you about the notarization and uh, about the documents. You know, cost to apply for this system is Canadian, only Canadian $1,500. Refunds. OINP will only refund the fee if they find that your application is incomplete or you withdraw your application before OINP starts processing it. Uh, keep in mind, once OINP starts working on your application, 
then uh, and after that you say i want to quit then the money will not be refunded to you oimp will not refund the fee if your application is unsuccessful and also you know if you they have started working on your application and your case is unsuccessful and then your money gone you will not get any refund you can check the status of your application through your account on the oimp e filing portals use a representative to apply you can hire a canadian immigration consultant you know they will do uh, they will create an account in the uh, oimp filing portal and then they will submit your application through the portal on your behalf this is the procedure to submit your application you know choose whether you are a returning user or a new applicant you know choose a uh, uh, ontario express entry and please skill work stream if you are a new applicant you must pre register with your name and date of birth not required if you are already registered log in to your one key account if you do not have one click sign up now once you have logged into your one key account you will be sent back to the onp filing portal create a profile in the onp filing portal once you have completed your profile click finish and you will be sent to your main page in the e filing portal click on the file uh, on the file number beside the french speaking skill work stream to begin your application it takes about three hours to complete your application so you no need to sit uh, three hours in one shot you just complete part of the application and save it and return back you have 45 calendar days of receiving your uh, a notification of interest from ontario then you can submit your application here after you apply then uh, you will get uh, an email uh, from oinp which will confirm that uh, they have received your application withdrawing your application i just mentioned that if you want to uh, withdraw your application just click the filing portal withdraw button and then uh, oinp will only refund the application fees if you I withdraw your application before they start processing it. Changes in personal information, you must notify and see if there are changes uh, in the following uh, things, uh, like your contact information, you must uh, notify them. Otherwise, if there is, uh, they have to inform you, they have to send you something, then they cannot send you. You know, if your immigration status, uh, uh, you know, changes, then you have to inform either it is expiring or changing in work permit. You have to inform them your family compositions due to marriage or common law relationships or a birth of a child change of custody of a child divorce or separation or death even you can change also your telephone you can change your telephone number email address and country of residence by logging into the oinp filing portal and uh, click on my profile on your main page after the changes has been made click save so changes in personal information, you know, uh, you can complete and save a change of personal information form. This is a form here. If you click here, you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can change everything and put all this information in this form here. And then you can send that form to Ontario, nominee at Ontario.ca. You now they will receive it and use the subject line application chain notice you and for your file number here. Maintain a valid express entry profile. You must have a valid profile in the express entry system uh, from when you apply until you are nominated. If you receive an invitation, you know, ITA for permanent residence from IRCC while your application is being processed uh, by the OINP, your profile is no longer available for OINP to nominate you. So once you know the application is uh, in the process, so you know ONP will not uh, have your profile in their system. So then you have to either you have to do reject the ITA issued by the IRCC, or you have to withdraw your application to the ONP. You have to do either one; otherwise, uh, they will not uh, find your uh, profile in the system. If you reject uh, the ITA. You must send ONP a request to continue processing your application as soon as possible. You know by doing the email Ontario nominee at Ontario.ca and include a screenshot showing that you have rejected the ITA from IRCC. 
So in this way, you know, they can find your application or your web profile in the system. If you are nominated, you know, then you will get two, there two documents. One is nomination approval letter. The second one is nomination certificate and by email. So once you are got nominated, you got nomination. So in the express entry profile, you know, in the pool, you will get additional 600 points here. So in this way, uh, your chances of getting uh, like uh, permanent residency is more higher. If you are not nominated, if your application is unsuccessful, or OINP will let you know by email, you know, but you have the right to go for internal uh, review. You know, in this way, you can send an email to internal review and a revision in turn at Ontario.ca. You must email OINP within 30 calendar days of receiving your notice of refusal if you live in Canada. If you live outside of Canada, then uh, you know from the date uh, from the notice of refusal, you have only 60 calendar days to apply for your internal review. But keep in mind, you must I must have to explain how on the date you submitted your application, you met all requirements. The second one, an error IRCC or OINP made resulted in your application being unsuccessful. So these two things you have to cover up in your email. So if you know they found that they are wrong in decision making, so you, uh, your internal review will be successful. They can consider your application again. So contact OINP, you know, these are the different ways to contact OINP. So this is the email here, telephone here. So if any technical problem during your e-filing, so you can uh, send also email here. And in the email, you have to include your file number, description of the problem, your screenshot if possible, your full name and contact information. ONP will review your email and respond to you as soon as possible. Guys, if you like this video, helpful, please uh, comment below of the video and uh, share it, like it and subscribe my channel, which is Millennium Navigation Canada. Thanks. Thank you. Have a nice day.